All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Wraparound Roundtable, the extended edition with Anthony Mora, the CEO of Blade Tech Hockey. So Anthony, question for you. I'm a big supporter of your products. Again, I showed them in the pre-show. I'll show them again, show the other skate this time. I got my, my son and daughter's names on my skates, including my business logo. You've really changed the steel game. There is a clear difference when using your steel from the stock options we kind of all used to get. Can you talk to me a little bit more about the science behind it? Absolutely. So essentially, we'll dive into it a little bit deeper, but this was made as a school project by my partner, Jeff. He looked at hockey skates and he looked, for example, any big company has skates from $100 to $1,000. And uh, they have, you know, every $100 increment, you get a better skate. Mm -hmm. But he really looked into it and he's like, oh, well, you're actually getting a better boot. The holder and the blade were exactly the same on the hundred dollar skate as a thousand dollar skate. Interesting. So he said it's something in that relationship between the holder and the blade where we can actually have some improvement and add some value to customers. And he went to the drawing board. He actually created the first blade tech. A lot of people don't know this, but was a spring loaded holder. Mm. And that, in fact, logo that's where we have a spring here. There is no spring now, but that was the first uh, blade tech technology was a spring-loaded holder did some test results uh it was amazing um made sense to have the movement in the front part of the blade so cushions your knees on impact and also gives you that energy back to you and when you accelerate so that made a lot of sense on the ice it it, it showed about five and a half percent increase in speed wow so that, that was the technology that's how it was developed when i met him he had this prototype it was a cool technology. The product wasn't very good. It was like you're adding a metal spring, you're adding weight. You had to like take apart your holder and your skate and put it back together again. And then if anything broke down after you installed it, it was impossible to maintain. So he reiterated and he reiterated into a blade. So now we have a blade that will flex on its own. And there's a little cutout here and we remove some material. So this is the front part and it'll flex up into the holder. Again, cushioning the impact and storing your energy and then releasing it to you as you extend your stride. So more efficiency and you're actually producing more power when you skate. So with that, again, the combination of that, we sent it off to third party testing with this new technology, the new blade technology, and the results were the same five percent, five and a half percent on average players were going faster. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny it was when whether you're looking at it from an NHL like level all the way down that's a that's a massive percentage like uh, something you know i i talked to an nhl player one time who told me i would spend millions of dollars to get one percent better at this level you know so when you get a five percent jump on something in hockey it's massive and, and, and again this is one of the reasons i want to do this show because you didn't just improve upon something as a company you've disrupted a whole industry with this now because I, I remember seeing you guys the first time it wasn't long before suddenly you know having a case for your blades was a thing or you know the skates might not even come with steel because you, you had to think about this and it's one of those things that like you change the way people think about skates and you're right it was the same took and everything forever uh and, and yeah. now that con conversation's changed and um you know i applaud you for that because again i think changes in hockey don't come as often as people think we're kind of stuck in this every year there's the the rebranded new merch with another number after it and it's not that different um, you know, no. I wouldn't, I don't think, I don't think it's unfair to say sometimes they just throw a different color paint on it. Right. It, but yeah, yeah, it's what's the word feigned innovation. That's it's, it's innovation yeah. because, Oh, it's a new year. We have to come up with something new. Right. I was like, well, that, that's not how an innovation happens. It doesn't happen in like small increments. It happens in large, large increments, but right. less often. That's like right. true. Innovation. That's yeah. true innovation. And, and, and those are the companies I'm trying to celebrate with this show. Uh, and you're, you're definitely one of them. Um, you know, again, I wanted to bring this up again. One of the, the greatest aspects of it is not just the performance, which is an amazing aspect of it, but the customization. Um, mm. And again, I said, I got my kids' names on it. I got my business logos on it. Um, it, it it's a great conversation starter for people. But I also, uh, I said this in the short episode, I like looking down and seeing my kids' names when I'm playing hockey. It kind of keeps me centered. Um, so you've really got countless options with uh, laser engraving, color, when did this start and how important has it been for the business? Interesting. Yeah, it started almost as a lot of things we did, not by accident, but like it was we were solving a problem. Everything we've done is to solve a problem. Right. Um, you know, even the invention of Flex Force Advantage was we were trying to solve a problem of like, you know, adding more value to to, to consumers as they're spending more money on skates. So um, we got 
our uh, laser machine, we, we used to manufacture all of our steel and sell it. Uh, and it wasn't even branded. Uh, there was nothing on there. <laughs> right. Okay. So, you know, we didn't even, you didn't know what size it was. You didn't like, there right. was just it was a raw, it was such a raw product. So honestly, we were like, well, we got to get a laser machine because we got to at least put our, you know, our BT logo. It's a great looking logo. People have to know if they're buying this, that it's ours, you know, and we're selling it for over. We're selling for a hundred bucks uh, a pair. So, you know, it's got to have that kind of perceived quality there in terms of that. So, so that's why we bought a laser machine was to put our logo on it. And then we went, well, we can put our logo, we can put any logo, we can put any name, we can, we can do anything. So we just started selling that and the uptake now, uh, we started doing that probably about six years ago, I think some in around there, uh, of the orders that come through online, over 25% of them have some have a uh, laser engraving alone. Wow. Uh, some of them have all the other services we do, profiling, sharpening, and, and everything you can do to a blade. Over 50% of, of all of our orders have some sort of service added to it. So, um, but that customization piece is really important for all of our teams. So every team we work with has customization and it's just a huge, huge thing. But people love you have, you know, your kids' names on there. People love having their own name on there too. It's the ownership. They have like ownership is like, that's their blade. It's not, you know, they bought a skate and that's the blade that it came with. That's like, oh, that's so-and-so's company blade. But when they buy it, even though it's a Blade Tech blade, but they put their name on it, that's theirs. I'll give you a perfect example. I gave blades last year to uh, Mikhail Grabowski, who played for the Leafs for a very long time, New York Islanders. And so he's here, he's in the Toronto area and he was skating and, and I got to go on the ice with him. And just gave him a set. Just say, hey, put these on, see what you think. And he comes off and I, I say, hey, Grabo, what did you think? And the very first thing he says, and I have a video, you guys can guys go to our Instagram and see it from last year. He goes, he goes, oh, I love them. He goes, I love them. My, my name is on it. They're like my blades. I think that's the first thing he said. <laughs> this is an yeah. NHL player who played like 800 games. And that's what he loved was, was the fact that his name was on it. So, Yeah, well, it, it, look, it's funny because when you look at hockey, we talk about innovation. It's only been in the last 10 years that customization outside goalie helmets has really even been possible just because technology. Right. Yeah. And, and and again, like, like if you want to get your name on your sticks, that was a process, you know what I mean? Mm. To, to do something like that. But now it's like, no, you can do it with your steel. There's ways to do it on sticks. There's ways to do it on lots of different things. Um, yeah. So I just, I think that customization is a huge part of our business now and, and the, the ability to help players or coaches, families just kind of have a little bit of, identity within their equipment without being super flashy unless they want to be right is, yeah. is a really cool aspect of it <laughs> there's always an option for sure yeah well it's i think some of the listeners are probably too young to remember gretzky's white nike skates or fedorov's white nike skates but that was a that was a time um yeah. you just told us a cool story do you have another favorite story spawning from your products uh whew, that's a good one um it's too many to pick from <laughs> i will come back I'm gonna I'm gonna have a story for you. I have no, a story. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. This was early days. This was early days. So it was a, it was more about our it was more of a business story. But we started we going back, we invented this amazing technology. We proved many times over that it works. So our goal, our first goal was let's get NHL approval because it actually makes players faster. So as long as it's available for everyone, it's not considered cheating. So that was the very first step. Right. And then right. let's get NHL players on them because if it's good for them. I promise it's good for your eight year old. Right. So let's uh, let's get these guys on it. Let's get them to test it. Make sure they like it because we knew it worked, but we had to make sure like it felt great on the ice and at that level. So we got guys on it. We started with New York Islanders and the Washington Capitals. These are the first two teams to really adopt and and start introducing players to it one at a time through their equipment managers. And shout out to Boxy and 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 Brocker for for getting us into the NHL through their teams. They tried it. It was great. Uh, the guys in New York Islanders did a little slow build. So they're like, I'm going to introduce this player and like, I'm going to order four pairs for him. Next player, I'm going to order four, eight pairs for him, whatever it is. Uh, Washington did a different approach. They tried it on two or three guys. They liked it. And I get a call. He goes, that's great. Uh, I'm going to place an order for 65 pairs for this <laughs> guy, this guy. Ovechkin included, Backstrom, wow. those guys. And we're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Hang up the phone. We're like, crap we only have 65 pairs. Like that's all we have Right, right. <laughs> they basically out overnight. And this, cause this was really, really early. This were literally almost prototypes. I mean, there were the blades and they worked, but 
that. So that was a story of like, <laughs> we just kind of said yes, and then figured out how to deliver it, you know, later on. So yeah. that was, well, hey, hey, listen, I love that. Cause sometimes that's like the risk you got to take to make things work. Oh, yeah. Like we, we always talk about an entrepreneurship, how there's lots of cliffs that you got to jump off of. And uh, it's really about your ability to do a risk analysis about how far down the cliff goes, but you got to yeah. take those jumps. And it's what a cool story that it's like, you know, the Ovechkin led capitals sold you out, but like, look where we're at now. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. amazing. No, um, and, it, and it led, it led to a couple of players winning a Stanley cup on, on Blatex. So yeah, it's a huge, huge, uh, huge plus for us. Say that again. I, I, I bet you like saying that out loud. I would like to yeah, say just a, just a few players winning, winning the Stanley cup. Yeah. Uh, I was, you know, I was watching them go around the, the the rink holding the cup. I'm like, that cup is being supported at the very bottom by three millimeter That's wide blade. Amazing. blade. <laughs> That's so that a really cool stuff. thing to see. That to I see. Was like, you know? We were celebrating with them, so that was yeah. cool. That is fantastic, and you know, Anthony, another sign of a good business is continued innovation and continued growth. You guys just launched a new stick line. Uh, why don't you tell us about that journey and why now? We did. This is a year in the making, and it's not, uh, to be very fair and very honest, because we usually are, uh, we did not create anything new per se. We didn't invent a new technology in this sense, but we have found in our dealings in the market for about nine years now, um, kind of what people like, what they're interested in, uh, all around performance. And again, we were really an innovation and performance brand. So Obviously, the blades and the skates is one thing and for skating performance, but the other big performance piece is sticks and mm -hmm. sticks is just a much larger part of the market. So, but we saw what people are doing and there's, you know, there was some people, I mean, companies are, are selling sticks now for, in Canadian dollars, since we're in Toronto, the newest, one of the newest sticks that just got released last month, $420 plus taxes. God. For you get a stick. computer for that. Yeah. I, I mean... I don't know like what it's not magic. It's not, there's so much, so much innovation you could do with a stick, but the stick is essentially they're all carbon fiber. They're the low kick or mid kick, uh, all that stuff. Like there's only so many, it's all about the specs and what, and what the top kind of specs are and in, in, in terms of performance and what a blade or what a stick can do. So we decided to go to all of the main manufacturers factories and said, Hey, let's figure out how to, manufacture the best stick uh and just not jack it up a fortune because we don't <laughs> need to do that right we're still gonna you know a business we're still gonna make money we're still gonna profit but we're not gonna gouge you for it right and so we are doing a senior stick with essentially the same specs as that 420 dollar one and bringing it to people for 170 dollars right and that is Again, adding value. And now I don't not want you to spend 350 or 400. I, you're going to spend that money anyway. But here's the story. Here's the solution. You buy, let's say $350 just, just to have a, so the math makes sense. Sure. $350, you buy a stick with a 30 day warranty. It breaks. You got to use your, your not so great backup stick and you got to go to the store and you got to replace your broken stick. And it's just a, ha it's adding this hassle. So for $350, you can buy two of ours. There's no warranty on them. But if you break a stick, you still have a backup stick. You don't lower your performance and you don't have to lower the grade of stick you're using. So it is a better, we're providing a better solution for the same amount of money. Yeah. You know, one of the, it also brings up a larger issue that we're pricing a lot of people out of the game uh, when mm -hmm. we, when we gouge. And it's it's been an issue in the hockey market for a while, to be fair. Um, so I love anytime someone says, look, I just want this to be affordable and I want you to be able to afford to play the game. Um, I think yeah. it's also important to remind everyone listening, the player makes the stick, not the other way around. Uh, that you, know, you, you spend an extra $200 on the stick. I mean, it might feel good, but it's not making you any much of a better player, right? It's, it's you got to put the work in. Um, so I, I love that that was the mindset. And like, I, I love supporting companies and people that are just trying to make the game more accessible. That's in our mission statement at Wraparound. By the way, you got to get a wraparound on your sticks just to see what that looks like now. Course, this could be course, something so. we, we have to do after we have the yeah. conversation. But yeah. it, it, I, 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 do you agree with that? I just, I don't understand where we're going from a, from a larger standpoint with some of the cost of equipment. And again, it's not really justified to be that expensive. You said it before. We all, we all got to make a living. All right, like th these are businesses. We got to make profit on the things that we sell. But at yeah. times I'm sitting back, I'm like, how how are kids 
or, you know, supposed to continue to play this game when sticks are $300, when I can pick up a football, basketball, baseball, floorball for a fraction of that, that we, yeah. we are, we are probably losing some of our best athletes because of this. There's no question. And, and there's a lot of talk uh, as there is in society and, and with hockey around, you know, diversity and inclusion and all that stuff. Right. All that stuff is secondary to money. Right. Uh, money is the barrier for hockey relative to all the other sports relative. To the, however, you have kids, you can spend your money for their entertainment in a right. million different ways. And there's going to be fewer and fewer people who are looking at hockey going like, uh, I don't really want to do that. You know, I can put my kid in soccer and swimming and still spend less money right. than if I put them in hockey. Um, so it, it's, it's really, really challenging. Um, and we say that, you know, we design things for the top end players. So they're spending their money. That's not about, <laughs> we're not about entry. Yeah, we're, not entry yeah. we're not, we're not there. We don't play I, enough. I, I should say this. I'm not looking it's down at anybody goal. that can afford those things. I'm not, I'm not saying don't get it. Like you said before, I'm just saying like generally, like, it makes this is a conversation I think needs to happen a little bit more. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, we are, we are all smaller players, but, and it is the bigger players that will have the most influence in being able to affect that, you know, including the NHL and, and, you know, there, there's big forces that need to come together to bring that, to bring that uh, to people and trying to get more people like develop the game at the grassroots and uh, encourage players to play it's real challenging though it right. really is because it costs also in general the cost of everything is increasing as we know so uh cost of ice cost of you name it so materials like our materials gone up 15 percent in the last yeah. two years i think yeah. so it's it's we've worked really hard to we haven't changed we've changed our price once in nine years so yeah. of our blade so it, it's we work really hard to to maintain what we're doing um and it is a challenge, but those are those are what makes business fun and, and trying to solve it so that at the end of the day, the consumer is still getting more value than the money that they're parting ways with. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, if you're listening to this show, this probably is something you care about, like like Anthony's saying, but it's like, like I look at the wraparound and, you know, the layman will look at it and say, oh, it's a piece of plastic. And there's, you know, like we don't we get that. We understand how people see this, but it, it took us a year to make that, you know, that 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 exact plastic that we made. Right. And like you said, it's a mixture and the material costs go up and down and left and right. Um, and that's part of the business as well that people don't see. Like I said, if you're listening to this podcast or this show, you probably do care about things like that. But it's like, sure. you know, there's so much work that goes in behind the scenes to make things great. Right. For for the consumer. So and I mean this, they don't have to care. Right. They can use it and it makes sense and it works for them. Um, I will also say this about the 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 cost of the game kind of rounding this out we talked about how blade tech steel you know five percent increase in in agility speed right like that's a massive number i don't mm -hmm. think any stick outside of when a curve was put in with stan makita right no, yeah. was there ever a five or ten percent increase in scoring by anyone right, right. you know it, maybe and the if first, there, maybe the first composite right maybe the first sure when you right added, right when easton came out with the first synergy Right, like, like the yeah, happen. yeah, flex in the state. It's same thing, right? Yeah. It's the same kind of technology. It's just a different, right? A different piece. Yeah. The, 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 there's a few things, and as you said before, they don't happen annually. <laughs> you no. know, they happen over decades, over centuries in some cases, um, and right. and it's one of those things of, you know, you really got to look at what you're putting your money into. And and again, I understand, I totally understand the flash of a new annual model of something. But at the yeah. same time, and I, I try and coach the kids I coach with this, I, I understand that. But remember, it's you using it that makes it magical, right? right. But in your case, it's actually a five percent increase. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Joking aside, Listen, you still yeah. have to. It's a five percent increase of your speed, right? So, but if you want right. to be faster than the next kid, uh, you got to work harder than them. You, you got to put the work in. Up. You got to. You got to put the. It's not. It's not the blanket solution. It's part of. Right. what you do but right. it it did it, it does definitely benefit so that's that's uh and if you look at how much you skate versus how much you touch the puck yeah where's the more value being uh put in if you're you're where you're spending your money you know what yeah. i mean to a, me a gym membership you know, there's <laughs> that too 100%. yeah I'm, I'm, teasing. I'm teasing actually going yeah. to the gym that's the that's the tough part right but it's it's um yeah for blades for us and i tell this to parents all the time because they're looking at i got a 10 year old kids with or parents with 10 year olds that are spending $600 on skates. 
Yeah. And I was like, I was like, well, do, I mean, they're like, do I do the 401, 601? I said, do the 401 because they're only going to use it for a year anyway. Yeah. Invest if, that if that. Yeah. Invest that extra 150 bucks in blades. You're going to have a much better solution and a much better performance. Yeah. There's no better value add for dollar spent than investing in blades, period. Yeah. I, so. I think uh, not only do I agree with you on that, but I think you're you're not the only one saying that. I think every critic, every influencer, every person reviewing Steel has said that, that the investment into this really does make a difference. And I think mm -hmm. that those are the things you have to look at, right? Um, which is really exciting. Anthony, last question for you. And, and I like to ask this, because I said, this is kind of the podcast for probably some gearheads. But what do you love about just working in the hockey market and, and being around hockey people all the time? Uh, I mean, honestly, meeting, meeting guys like you and going to the shows, trade shows, expos, all sorts of things, connecting, seeing what you guys are doing in your stories. And so the stories and how people come together and, and honestly, I have not met a more passionate group of people than mm -hmm. people kind of like us that run hockey companies. Uh, I promise you, no one starts, says, I want to make a ton of money. I'm going to go into hockey. <laughs> no one says <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that is not the driving force. Not at all. Whatsoever. So, because there's a lot of things you can do that would probably make a lot more money. But, but that's having said that, and I kind of say that tongue in cheek. But having said that, is it's great to see the innovation and the passion that comes from that, and really, and the goal and the drive is 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 everyone's focused on making the game a little bit better, right? And whatever they're doing, what you guys are doing, what we're doing, just incremental increase and in making it a little bit better uh, and, and making sure the people that are investing in hockey and are enjoying themselves and, and having, and you enjoy yourself when you have great value, you know, when your stick doesn't break the first time you use it, uh, <laughs> when you feel like a little bit faster or for us old guys, if I can go to bed and my knees don't hurt as much because my blades flexing a little bit and absorbing some of that. I mean, I love that feeling of going yeah. to bed and not having my knees throbbing. So, uh, so those, there's the benefit is a little bit different depending on who you are, how old you are and where you're at in hockey, but we try our best to add it in whatever, whether it's blades or sticks, whatever we're have our hand in, we, we want to add value. And, and, um, and, and it's again, love seeing all the other companies that are doing that in their own realm. Yeah. Th those, those shows are fun when we all kind of get together and get to kind of just talk about how things are going and, uh, you're always so gracious at those shows too, you know, just excited to be there. It's kind of infectious. And, you know, go back to what you said. I, I don't ever remember thinking, oh, I'm going to get into the hockey world to make a lot of money. I do remember yeah. thinking I'd like to make a living in hockey. And, yes. uh, and that was a cool distinction. Right. And, and uh, that was one of the other, you know, reasons I want to do the show is to hopefully inspire some people out there. Maybe there's a young kid listening who wants to get into a hockey business one day, you know, you can do that. Yeah. Right. And you yep. can make a living in this game outside of just playing. And if you can do that, God bless you. Don't get me wrong. Yep. Right. Yep. But but the hockey community uh, is so much more than just what we do on the ice. Right. Um, and I love that. So, Anthony, you've been a great guest. I will remind everybody if the giveaway is still going on, you can over to hockeywrapround.com and use his code word. But if it's over, uh, obviously go over to Blade Tech Hockey. Take a look at what they have. If you haven't already. Right. See what options there. But Make sure you check back early and often whenever you're listening, because you never know what Anthony might be having on his website. Something new. Shop, something new. Yeah. Our shop is never finished. So right. it's always, always open. <laughs> I love it. No, that's the way. Always open with Blade Tech Hockey. Anthony Mora, can't thank you enough for being here today, man. Thank you, Lee. This has been awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's going to do it for this edition of the Wraparound Roundtable. Catch all of the shows on our YouTube channel, or you can listen to the Shorter Giveaway Podcast weekly. Uh, wherever podcasts can be heard, whatever social medias we're on, uh, keep an eye out for that. But without any other delays, everybody have a great week and skate on. Yeah.